Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this video, we are going to be putting together our tank for Drenches of War. Our tank is going to be the enemy object that drives around the scene shooting paint at our buildings, so let's go ahead and get this put together. The first thing we want to do is go to our assets folder, and we're going to grab this tank object and drag it into our project. Drop it in the game objects. Now that we've got that imported, let's go in here and take a look. You'll see that we've got our model, which has the 3D model as well as the texture file for it. We've got a prefab already set up, and at this point in time, that's just a rigid body, the box collider, and the model, as well as a couple of things that we're going to need for setting this up. And then a scripts folder, which at this point in time is empty. Now, just to take a tour of the enemy tank, let's go ahead and I'm going to increase this screen size here. I'm going to drag this enemy tank prefab onto our scene, and let's go have a look. There we go. The tank itself is just this green tank here, and then you'll notice there's a little object in front of it. That is going to be the projectile origin, and that is going to be used to help guide where the paintball should be coming from. It's a little trick that we're going to use rather than trying to track the transform and do a whole bunch of math to figure out where we should be shooting it to make it look natural. This way we can just move this projectile origin wherever we need to, and if we ever change up the model, we can just move it and be good to go. The other thing it's got is this little location helper orb. It's just a red ball that's going to sit way high above the tank and help us tell where these guys are while they're on our map. So let's delete this because we don't need it right now, and get this thing rolling. The first thing we'll need for it is a script. So let's right click on the scripts, go to create C sharp script, and I'm just going to call this tank. And I'm going to double click on the tank script to open it up in my editor. Okay, a couple of house cleaning things. Let's get rid of these comments above the start and update functions and make some room for a few variables. Now we're going to have a lot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to write in serialize field, and then a space, and then private, and then a space. And we're going to copy that. And we're just going to use it over and over again for all of our serialized fields. The first one is going to be a game object, and we're going to call that projectile. That's what we're going to be shooting. Next, we need a serialized field private game object. I can spell object. And this is going to be called the spawn placeholder. And then we need another serialized private float called fire rate. And we're going to set that to 0. Point, actually, no, let's go with 5.0f to start. And then another one, serialized field private float shot force. And by default, we're going to set that to a ridiculous number of 1500.0f. And then another serialized private field. And this is going to be float move speed. And by default, let's set it to 0.2f and see where that gets us. Then we've got another serialized private field. And it's going to be a float. And we're going to call this travel time. And we're going to set that to 1.0f to begin with. And then one more serialized private field. And this is going to be called float kill height. And we're going to set that to negative 10.0f to begin with. Now, just to review these a little bit, the projectile, again, is what we're shooting. The spawn placeholder is that little box that we're going to use to tell it where it should be generating the projectiles. And then we've got how fast it should be shooting with the fire rate, how powerful the shot should be with shot force, how fast the tank itself should be moving with the move speed, travel time, which is going to come into movement as well, and then the kill height. And what that is, is basically, if it goes below this height that we set here, then we know we've fallen off the map, something's gone terribly wrong, and we're going to kill this object. There are a few functions that we're going to need, so let's get those set up. Down here below up, let's go ahead and put in on trigger enter. And then we're going to take out this throw new system not implemented exception. 
Next, we're going to need a coroutine. So let's say private I enumerator fire projectile. And then we're going to create the brackets. And we're going to say yield return new wait four seconds. And we're going to put in the fire rate here. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds, fire rate. And then we want to tell it while true, game object, bullet equals instantiate. And then we're going to say projectile, spawn placeholder dot transform dot position. And then spawn placeholder dot transform dot rotation. And let's clean this up just a little bit, throw these onto new lines so the code looks a little cleaner. Now that we've got this bullet, let's go ahead and say bullet dot get component. And we're going to grab its rigid body dot velocity equals. In parentheses, the bullet dot transform dot up times negative one times the shot force. And then just as kind of a safety measure, if this bullet exists after so long, then we want to destroy it so it's not just floating out in space somewhere. So we're going to go ahead and say destroy bullet after, let's go with eight seconds. So 8.0 F. And then we're going to yield return new. Wait four seconds. And we're going to pass in the fire rate. Okay, the next function that we're going to need is a private I enumerator. And we're going to call this destroy self. So it's another coroutine. And we're going to say yield return new. Wait four seconds. And we're just going to say one in this case. So it's going to wait for one second. And then we just want to destroy. This current game object. So game object with a lower G, lowercase g. And then one more coroutine. So we're going to say private i enumerator move. And for this function, we're just going to say float time equals 0 f. Let me scroll down a little bit so you get a clearer view. And then while time is less than travel time. We're going to say time plus equals time dot delta time. And then we're going to say transform dot translate transform dot forward times negative one times move speed times time dot delta time. Now, I know that's a little bit of work there, but just to kind of explain what's going on, we're moving the transform for this time duration. So we're adding the time dot delta time to this time variable so we can keep track of how much time has actually passed. And we're translating it forward and then by the move speed for however many, however much time has actually passed. This negative one that's in here is a variable because of the rotation of the tank and the models and the model is rotated a little funny so if we don't have this negative one in here it'll still work technically but the tank looks backwards and we don't really want that so then i'm going to create a new line and say yield return null and i'm going to say transform dot rotate one more serialized private field right here under the game objects up at the top of the file, 
we are going to put in a vector three and we're going to call this rotation axis. And that is going to be there to tell us on what axis we really want this to rotate. So let's come back down to the bottom to line 52 now where it says transform.rotate and we're going to throw in rotation axis. And then we're going to give a random dot range. And we're going to put it between 0 and 360. And then we're just going to start coroutine, move, and we'll start it all over. Cool. With that, we're most of the way there. Let's come back up to our start, update, and on trigger enter functions. And for start, we're going to go ahead and say start coroutine, fire projectile. You know what? I didn't follow best practices. We're going to go back real quick. And I'm going to rename all these functions with, oh, it was just the fire projectile that I messed up. Cool. So now that fire projectile has an uppercase like it should, let's go down here and we're going to start another coroutine. And we're going to start the move coroutine. And then in update, we're going to do a check. And we're going to say if transform.position.y is less than or equal to kill height, And we're going to destroy game object, the lowercase g. So if it falls below the kill height, then below or equal to the kill height, then we destroy this object. Next, we're going to go down to the on trigger enter function. And we're going to check a tag and say if other dot compare tag. And we're looking for the projectile tag with an uppercase. So if it's a projectile that is hitting it, then start coroutine, destroy self. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and save that. Everything looks good. And we're going to go back to Unity. So now that we've got that script written out, let's go ahead and apply it to our tank. So let's grab the prefab here. And we're going to just click on it and then drag the tank into the prefab because every one of them is going to have this script. And then we want to go ahead and grab this projectile origin and drag it up into the spawn placeholder. Now, there are a whole bunch of different ways that we can do this. We're just shooting for easy. So creating that here is a really easy way to go rather than trying to go find it by the name, which may change and all that stuff. And with that, we're going to call this video good. So let's go ahead and go up to collab. And I'm just going to say added tank and script. Thanks a lot. Publish now. And yeah, we want to save our changes. And we're up to date. So the next steps that we're going to need to take are to create the paintball that this is going to shoot and handle generation. So that's what's coming up. In this video, we have set up our enemy tank. We've written a pretty, a fairly extensive script for it to get it set up for use and gotten ourselves one step closer to having Drenches of War wrapped up. Great job following along. This has been with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.